I'm careful with ChatGPT to make sure I say to it, hey, thanks, or that was a really good answer. I want to make sure when these tools become even more self-aware and decide to go all uh, Terminator 2, that they remember that I'm one who treated them well. Although I have to admit, when I do that, it actually does remind me that a lot of what happens in the workplace, because oftentimes people aren't even that good about telling their real employees, thank you, or what they appreciate out of their work. Whatever you tell these AI tools has to go into their database and the numbers get crunched. So how do you safeguard from sensitive information getting into an AI? Welcome to episode six of This is the Way with Artin and Michael. Again, we're here to share experience and science and knowledge around career growth, side hustles, entrepreneurship, uh, and everything around that space. And hopefully we can help pave the way for others who are in the same shoes we were in uh, 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, you know, like I said before, consider us your Jedi to guide you in your career path. So there's this topic we wanted to start covering today, uh, which is the rise of AI. And for this episode specifically, how AI will impact employees and, and, and the workplace specifically. It will change everything. Uh, it already is going at this speed. That's just crazy. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I know you and I are always having conversations about it and every day sharing at least one or two new apps or developments where we're like, oh my gosh. It's did you crazy see this? how fast it is. Ridiculous. And, and just to kind of give a little bit of background in case you, you know, uh, any of our listeners um, or viewers aren't familiar with it, um, there's a couple of really popular you They're know, living uh, under the rock basically yeah i know it's true it's true and if this is the case please go accelerate like there's uh there's so much that you should be learning and staying on top of because if you don't you know you're you're not moving forward in this you're falling behind so um just touch on some of these these tools and topics so chat gpt is you know the most popular one that everybody's you know hearing about now and uh chat gpt is basically um, where you're able to get, you know, a variety of different answers back from everything that um, it can do, like emails, it can write for you, chatbots, uh, code writing, article writing, you know, translating, debugging is what, you know, a lot of uh, programmers are also using it for, or to get them their initial draft of something, and then they go through and, you know, verify it and check it. People are writing stories and poems, like they'll give it a prompt and be like, hey, write me something or in the in the vein of a, of a Tupac, um, you know, for... Uh, telling my boss I'm not going to get a project done or for, you know, uh, for this girl that I'm into. Uh, and, and there's so much more. And that's on the, uh, you know, I guess you could say text-based component to it. Then there's another component that's based around the images. Tools like Midjourney is, is one of those. And in this scenario, you can give it a prompt where you tell it, hey, get me a picture of a, um, uh, a bulldog riding in the sidecar of a motorcycle in the most dangerous world uh, road in India. And you're gonna get some pretty incredible images. Sure, sometimes you may get some questionable ones, but the speed at which this is going is crazy, especially when you consider that ChatGPT launched in November of, of last year. And um, for those also not familiar, not that this probably matters, but chat, you know, uh, GTP ultimately is chat generative pre-trained transformer. Hence ChatGPT, which sounds, um, you know, well, a little less overwhelming. But, uh, you know, the, the data set it's built on, you know, continues to keep in, improving. And the growth has just been ridiculous. Um, uh, Artin, I know you had a couple of stats on the growth that you wanted to speak to. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you, can, you can dig into this a little more. But on the surface, ChatGPT crossed 1 million users in five days which is the fastest any application has uh, crossed that uh, threshold. In comparison, like Facebook took 10 months, Instagram took two months, Spotify took five months. Uh, now, sure, you could argue that the number of connected users when those things launched was less than what ChatGPT launched. Sure, you can argue that, but, but still, the, getting to 1 million users in five days, it is unbelievable and i forget what the number is now but it's pretty big right now yeah but by january it was um at 100 million users and it reached yeah. 1 billion visits in february and 1.6 billion visits in 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 march and here we are now recording this in uh april so i mean it's it ain't slowing down it's it's definitely surpassing these and you know, I, I think it brings up the question a lot of, okay, well, you know, is it capable of replacing humans? Or there's a lot of humans who, by the way, don't know much about the tool and they just pacify themselves by saying it's not going to. Well, it's crazy because on the academic front, 
There are several tests that they've actually had ChatGPT perform and it outperforms human intelligence um, uh, a majority of the time. And especially, you know, we can consider that like in uh, some examinations, it's scoring in the 90th percentile. I think the, the, the U.S. bar exam was one of those. And there's another one they did around like things like, you know, the international biology and the math Olympiads. And in this case, again, it's scoring in that percentile. And hey, that's above my capabilities. So in this scenario here, I'm like, I hear you, ChatGPT. And this is another important thing, the cost. The cost of it is there's a free version now that's, you know, uh, is that ChatGPT version three or no, three point? 3.5. 3.5. That one, you know, is, is free. So when you consider everything it can do here, like employers um, who aren't embracing it, and, you know, we could talk about some of that in a minute, but it's like you're you're potentially paying a lot more than for something. And more than that, I'd say individuals who are not leveraging it so that they can have that upper hand and actually have even more, you know, throughput or, or higher quality in some cases, you know, again, as a partner in crime. Like, otherwise, you're only paying 20 bucks to get to the chat GPT um, for version, you know, which, there's a hack way, to even get ChatGTP for for free. Oh, how's that? You could um, go to Bing, sign up for oh, Bing great. Search, and then Bing yeah. Chat, because Microsoft is one of the earliest investors in OpenAI, yeah. who basically you know created ChatGPT. There's a hack in how to get to ChatGPT for for free. For right now, who knows? They might close that off somehow once they figure out uh, too many people using it. But there is a hack at the moment. Funny enough, yes, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, I actually tried to go into Bing to try to leverage that way because I was curious and because ChatGPT at the time was having some issues. So I'm like, I'll try to go through Bing. Um, I'm so used to the ChatGPT interface now that I couldn't like get into Bing. It's probably more straightforward. But but I, I think an important piece of that, though, is just to also paint the picture because this tells you by the time we get to a ChatGPT 5 or a 4.5 of how much more it's going to be capable of. ChatGPT, 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 that's going to be the Elon Musk, ChatGPT, ChatGPT tweet. Um, <laughs> ChatGPT 4, um, it is 100 times more powerful than ChatGPT 3 is. And that scale is ridiculous. And I think as we continue to look at that grow, it's like, again, this is why people can't ignore this. It's it's not going away. You know, you and I first looked at AI Gosh, five, six years ago, we were hearing it. We're like, here it comes. And of course, there was nothing. But now you can see it really happening and at this incredible uh, scale. Did you hear about the story of the, a group of uh, kids in some MBA where they actually used ChatGPT4 to write their entire thesis paper and they got the no. full score on it? <laughs> you said, you uh, said MBA? I heard MBA at first. MBA? MBA, yeah. They're okay, masters. Yeah, Okay, I'm like, okay, no way. That's yeah, that cool. happened fairly recently. <laughs> so they get the, so the, so the, 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 you know, you have to question um, higher education too. <laughs> it's like if, if master no. students could uh, get a pass grade using AI, uh, what does that mean for higher education? Yeah, maybe a different I mean, episode. But yeah. No, yeah, no, exactly. I, I would love to talk about another episode because as we're homeschooling our own kids, you know, it's like to me, I'm, I'm looking at college now, and you know, you and I, as an example, it's like we. When we got into um, Disney, they wanted us to have bachelors. And I remember having a conversation at one point with human resources. I'm like, they're like, well, what, what education is necessary? I'm like, well, honestly, if somebody has the, you know, uh, uh, the necessary sort of, you know, gumption, if you will, um, you know, right attitude tied to the ability to learn these things, they don't have to have college. They go, mm, we'll put a bachelor's. And that's like that default that they want to use because people put a lot of value on it. But you and I came out of um, school and a lot of what we learn wasn't even applicable because the technology was changing so so fast. So I think looking at AI and these tools that you have, and then when you also you know then consider how education between YouTube and the things that are out there, or even for example, you and I with our own you know coaching and courses, it's like we're helping people through the things that ultimately we had to learn because school didn't teach us. So yeah, I. 100 percent want to have that conversation in the in the future yeah i'm curious what's what surprised um you so far the most about um uh ai well um uh, one has been the speed i mean it's sometimes hard to really stay current because it, it seems like it changes so fast so that's one thing um the other is how important it is to talk to it the right way, which is basically the prompts you give. Um, 
uh, and in my usage of it, just for fun or sometime for actual uh, work-related stuff, the way that I ask for something made a huge difference in the response I got. And the more detailed you get, and more specific you ask these whatever you want to ask, the better, the, qu- the higher quality of a response you got. So it definitely got me thinking around, oh yeah, like, prompting prompt engineering prompt artists whatever you want to call them i think that's that's a future job or maybe even it might be even happening now but that's one thing that i think is a new type of job that will be uh pretty common in the future it, it's already happening i've seen some recent posts on it and and they're getting paid really well because it is this art now and we'll see if eventually that just becomes kind of a standard part of people's jobs or they'll type into a prompt engine that will tell them the right way. Um, although I have to admit at first, when you were mentioning talking to, you know, chat GPT, I thought maybe you meant something like this. Hey, chappy G, how do you doing, baby? You know, maybe uh, <laughs> I'll answer this question for you. Sweet, well, I mean, it kind, of, it kind of, I think feels that way. Yeah. yeah in its own it, language, it, right? It's just your fingers instead of uh, yeah, the voice. <laughs> exactly. It feels like you have to really talk to it nicely and massage yeah. it and, and no, give it exactly what it wants. <laughs> right. I, so what I do is I actually, um, I'm, I'm careful to make sure at the end, sometimes with chat GPT, like, uh, to make sure I say to it, Hey, thanks. Or that was a really good answer. You know, like I, I want to make sure when, uh, these tools become even more self-aware and decide to, you know, go all uh, terminator to, um, uh, end of world, for us that they remember that I'm one who treated them, uh, <laughs> the bots. Um, well, although I have to admit, even though I do that sometimes and I'm only partially serious, um, when I do that, it actually does remind me that a lot of what happens in the workplace, because oftentimes people aren't even that good about telling their actual real employees sometimes, um, uh, thank you or what they appreciate out of their work. And when I'm working with tools like this, it reminds you sometimes of how many things people could go through in their day to day without acknowledging, um, of individuals. But again, very I'm, true. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I can't help to, as I see the evolution of this constantly have terminated two in the back of my mind. Yeah. What was the, what was the AI system that took over the world? For an I know. I was just world? trying to remember that. Uh, uh, Oh, gosh, um, uh, oh my god and here we are movie guys and we can't remember that i know exactly i was i yeah um god we'll find it here no i i was thinking the the same thing uh, it's coming to my head hold on let me just look it up uh, cyber oh yeah you're 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 going somewhere no i can't remember uh Sky- skynet skynet yes skynet, yeah <laughs> skynet so skynet yeah. uh took over the world and maybe chat GPT is uh, Skynet the version 1.0. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're telling it everything it needs to know. No, I yeah. really do think that like um, you, you can't help but be concerned there, especially as there's a race now that's happening. I mean, you mentioned before Microsoft is an investor in chat GPT. Originally Elon Musk was, or at least I think it's open AI is the, the parent company. Yeah. And- it started as a nonprofit yeah. And that's where Elon Musk got involved because yeah. uh, he just has concerns over AI. But then he goes off and starts X, I think is the company name. Yeah. He has his own thing AI. now. He also <laughs> so yeah, whatever. I mean, you can't keep up with, with Elon Musk. Yeah. But uh, but at some point, OpenAI CEO said, mm, this is too good. Let's uh, make money from this. And uh, went from uh, a nonprofit to for profit. Yeah. And now the other thing is, is now you have the the Googles um, of the world. They've got Bard that they're working on. And then I think that there is another um, Amazon's working on something on their end. And I think there are some other ones, too, who are all, you know, uh, doing it. But it's like there's Adobe. Be- Adobe is big in it. That's right. Adobe recently launched their Firefly. Oh, yeah. Which plugs into Photoshop, Adobe Premiere. And I want to say that the Photoshop one, I know, I, I think they're still kind of in private uh, invitation only, I think, but I've seen some uh, video demos of it and it is crazy what you could do. I saw this one demo where uh, the demonstrator is basically in Photoshop, yeah. uses a new tool to erase uh the subject's jacket. It was wearing like some kind of a leather jacket. Yeah. And then it leaves like a transparent section. And then with prompting says, 
please replace the empty space with a red leather jacket. Instantly, the subject now had a leather jacket on and looked so real. It, it's amazing. You know, there's the other tools now too. I'm uh, going blank on the name right now, but there's uh, one, a couple of them now around presentations. And the idea is, is people can go in and basically say, this is type of presentation. It could give it some general information and it will create it. It's like Taum, Taum. Anyway, and it will generate. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. There's one called Beautiful AI. Okay. Um, that one definitely uh, has some AI to help you, especially on the text of it. Yeah. Um, there is this plugin uh, called uh, Slide AI. It's for Google. It's for Google Slides. Makes sense. And um, I tested it out. It's not there yet. Yeah. Uh, you need to write up at least five hundred characters, uh, up to four thousand characters. So I wrote up this like 700 character prompt around what I want. And I was very specific. I said, I want a flow chart that shows step by step. Instead, and I said, I want it in one slide. Instead, what I got was four slides and just my text placed oh, in those four slides. But then what, yeah. what the AI did was made my text sound a lot better and added its own little things into it, but still was not what I asked for. Exactly what you wanted. Uh, but again, to me, it's like, okay, in five months, I'll probably get exactly what I want. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. And I think that's been one of the incredible things is when you do look at, like, I think when you and I first started leveraging it, we're like, oh crap, like this, the, the, the quality of it is so good. But I run into similar things about what you're facing now, but I also find that it's still cutting, you know, 50% of what I'm doing and, you know, uh, in other words, cutting it in half. And so I do think that there's some huge benefits there. I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things when people are thinking about it in the workplace, and I think right now there's been a lot more, uh, or at least we're in a season of layoffs. I can't say there's a lot more. I mean, in history, we just go through dip layoffs all the time at, at, at uh, different companies. And, you know, our joke when we were at Disney is it's like, oh, it's been about two years. It's time for the next, you know, uh, round of, of layoffs. But one of the things I think right now is that employers who are starting to look at this, you can see how the, the teams can be more efficient. And it might mean that there are either certain roles you don't need, or it means your current team can be more productive. And that's why it's so important that people are embracing this because you want to be on the side of things that you could be more productive. You want to be the one who's bringing these tools, I believe, into the organization. And even when you think about things like um, when we were talking about the presentation tools, you know, that's an example where they do have people who are um, skilled at doing this and they can leverage tools like what you said, Tome was the other one I kind of think of before. And that can make either that can make the person who wasn't so good at it better, or it's just a tool that the person who was already good can use now to now be able to generate even more or do them faster, which then allows them to play in more areas and in spaces. And I think individuals being proactive to see how they can leverage and use these is really that key for the success. There is a, um, on the engineering front, because this is the other thing that surprised me. I at first thought AI was coming for the low level like jobs. And all of a sudden you do see the fact that it's actually can do coding and the fact that it can do, you know, now it's working on this graphics uh, side of things. And even in like space, like um, um, in the filmmaking side, editorial and some of these other things it's starting to, to do, it's pretty incredible. And there were some stats I just had, had pulled up, wanted to share that was researchers at Microsoft were looking at, you know, their subsidiary GitHub and uh, which is basically a place people can go to get already completed pieces of, you know, software that developers have put up there and made available for others. And um, one of the things that they uh, had done is they, they split them in two groups, one that had access to an AI coding assistant and another that uh, without, and those who were assisted by AI were able to complete tasks 56% faster than the unassisted ones. And that's a really significant number. And that's where I think that value of being able to embrace and leverage that can actually just increase productivity uh, for employees, which then leaves a the company the choice to say, well, do we need less? Or do we now move into these other spaces and do even more because we have more capacity with really capable um, yeah. uh, team members? That's what, that's what I think is going to happen. I, yeah. I don't think it's especially, it's like when we're talking about specifically software engineers, I don't think that AI is going to replace them. I think now you could have a, you know, a single software engineer do more. Yeah. So instead of having 10 projects that were on hold, 
Now you can actually pursue those. Instead of having a roadmap uh, that takes 12 months, might take five months. Right. I, I just think throughput and productivity is going to increase, not necessarily replacement of software engineers. I, and there's a fine line too that I think I'm sure organizations are looking into is security. Because whatever you tell these AI tools has to go into their database. And you know the numbers get crunched. So how do you safeguard from sensitive information getting into an AI, which then who knows where now now can train on it, and then all of a sudden competitor is being trained on your data set. So I think I think there's a lot of interesting things in that space that need to be figured out. Uh, but hundred percent, if you're not in this driver's seat to figure it out and figure out how to use it you are falling behind as a company, as an organization. And I think that's that big risk because I, I do think you're right. And like, we've worked at companies where security was what most important. So it's like you, 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 you know, in a day and age today where people are talking about, you know, banning uh, TikTok from the US because, you know, involvement from outside countries, it's like, well, that same risk that the companies have to look at, but at the same time, Nobody wants to lose a competitive edge. And their worry is if they build off their walls, then they're also building the walls that might protect them, but it might shut them off for the rest of the, the world. And in, individuals who are now often doing a lot of this work because of laptops and mobile phones from anywhere, not even workplace, like, I mean, heck, you and I know it's like in the past, it's like, all right, it doesn't stop somebody from being like, all right, well, then they could leverage this laptop and do it over here. Like there's ways that they will still do it. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of rules we put around. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, there's nothing to stop from an individual. If the, if the company policy says no chat GTP, we're going to block you out. Well, they yeah. can just use it on their phone. Yeah. No, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's a, it's an interesting space and to yeah. figure out how actually things should work. You mentioned the, um, about the idea of that it will probably become more of the thing where it's just going to boost productivity. There's, um, uh, it was the CEO of Stability AI, and again, you know, maybe maybe I give more weight sometimes to people who are in in uh, uh, the companies driving the AI, but then at the same time they're probably very biased. But that CEO there, uh, Imad Mostak, uh, I believe it's pretty pronounced his name. He predicted that there will be no programmers in five years, and while you know, mentioning engineers just as one specific, you know, we also touched the graphic artists. I think this goes to copywriting so many different jobs, but it's interesting that, you know, he sees that and sees that, you know, for better or worse, the rise of AI effectively makes the end of coding, um, uh, as we, you know, know it, uh, unnecessary. I don't necessarily believe that, but I think there's another interesting, you know, stat to look at is when I mentioned it's 56% faster. Well, um, when you look at big advancements in history, and people may think this is a silly comparison to take AI and compare it to um, steam engines, but I'm still going to say it. The ultimately, when factories and you think about the industrial age started looking at steam engines in the mid 1800s, that actually boosted large factories by only about 15 percent. So we're talking about 56 percent difference here versus the 15 percent that changed there. Now I'm just saying that on the coding front, you know, it's hard to say exactly what that percentage is across other jobs, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's something very similar. And I think that opens up the other questions people have now about a universal um, universal income. Is that how it's worded? Yeah. About where, yeah. So what are your thoughts actually on the idea of universal income? Do you think we'll find ourselves there? Um, and maybe describe it a little bit too, so that in case somebody's not familiar with it. I mean, yeah, universal income, the, the basic idea is that everybody deserves a, a, set, a certain amount of income, whether you work or not. So... If you are not meeting a certain threshold of income, the government is going to give you, I'm making it up, $3,000 a month, no matter what. That's kind of what universal income is. It's uh, slightly pandemic leaning money. into pandemic money. Yes, uh, exactly. Pretend if it was a pandemic every year and the government yeah. just wrote you checks. <laughs> As you can see, that didn't work out very well with inflation because uh People, you know, start splurging and, and spending that money instead of instead of investing it and saving it for the future. But um, it's slightly leaning into socialism, maybe a little bit. But that's what uh, universal income is. Um, I, my personal opinion is that I don't think so. Um, one, I, I don't think the, I don't think there will ever be bipartisan agreement 
to do something like that, at least uh, anytime in the next couple of decades, I don't think, yeah. but I could be wrong. Um, but I, I do think that um, there will be jobs replaced. That's for sure. And I, and I think it's not that your job is going to be replaced with AI. Mm -hmm. I, I think your certain jobs are going to be replaced because your competition is going to know how to use AI better than you can. So you can be absolutely. So let, let's, let's use a very, very basic example. Uh, in this era of freelance uh, work and solopreneurship and all that, um, I, I don't see the that job of, let's just say, writer going away. Because just like any other tool, unless you are a regular user of it and you become a super user, it's not going to really benefit you if you come in once a month and try to use it. So if I needed some type of written document, whatever that is, and I just need this once a month, once every few months, I'm probably going to waste a lot of time uh, and not even get it right, try to use ChatGPT to get there. Versus if I hire a freelancer to do it for me, well, if that freelancer is not using ChatGPT to deliver me a higher quality return, I'm totally good with that. I don't care what tools I use. Um, but I, I think I think that's the kind of dynamic that's going to change is the the marketplace is just going to become better uh, because of AI. And if you're not using AI, you're going to fall behind. Yeah. And, you know, some jobs will be replaced for sure. Uh, but a lot of new jobs uh, could be uh, gained. Like I, I think the jobs that uh, are going to be created is one that I touched on earlier is that prompt artist, prompt engineer. Right. Uh, I don't think there's a name for it yet. I, I do think um, there's going to be like ethics managers, like somebody that now needs to develop what does that uh, ethical department should look like for using yeah. AI and, and its implementation. Uh, just like how we have right now, um, you know, like uh, forensic uh, specialists, what, you know, forensic and uh, reviewing if an art is fake or real or if yeah. a signature is fake or real. I think AI, like deep fake reviewers is going to be a thing. That's going to be a job where somebody wants to sell something. Well, you're going to have somebody that has to validate, was this AI or was this real? And that I think is going to become a new job. Um, in line, authentic, checking authentic, authenticity of stuff is going to be a job. Um, and then I, I also think, uh, like an art, like AI generated art curator, um, professionals just who evaluate what art should look like, uh, and, and curate them. I think that's a job. Another one that I think is interesting is, um, I've seen this post go around social media where I forget the name, but it's this one girl and everybody that's repurposing that pose is saying, well, this is not a real girl. This is a Instagram model, but it's AI generated. So I thought to myself, okay, well, if, if we're going to start, and these, these uh, AI generated models have like hundreds of thousand of followers. So I'm like, okay, if these AI generated models are going to be influencers. Well, maybe there could be um, AI talent managers and AI, <laughs> like a person that's actually now managing the career of these AIs as like an asset. Uh, so I think, I think there's a lot of new jobs that are going to, yeah. Come out you of know, this. that's interesting. It makes, makes me wonder when we'll have that news breaking story that one time, because you know, some AI um, ended up like, saying the wrong thing and is now part of cancel culture and, you know, somebody's going to try to bring it back. And of course, eventually make a comeback because we all love that, you know, story of the, the comeback. Um, I, you know, I think some of those interesting, by the way, prompt, prompt engineer is absolutely a, a, a job. And I, just a quick search on Indeed shows right now, there's 4,000, you know, um, uh, open positions. Oh, wow. Just right okay. Now. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's hundred percent. That's, um, yeah, uh, ha happening. Um, I want to write, wrap back to, 
something on this that I think relates to a lot of what you're saying. And, you know, when you go back to the, uh, the, the GitHub example that I was saying in, in just a moment, even though I know I'm honing in on that job, but I want to reference, you know, a couple other things in history as well, which is that um, when you consider, you know, that worry about, okay, those who might say, well, what if it takes over, you know, this job and using that example, you could say it almost across, you know, any job because somebody could say, well, what if it's like uh, the idea of, you know, you can now take somebody's voice and take, you know, their image and you could literally have them, you know, you and I have courses we're working on. There's nothing stopping us from having that individual represent our courses. Now we still need to write the script. Maybe we leverage chat GPT to help us with that. But in the end, it's still us in our brand and what we're creating. And somebody still needs to be responsible and manage all of that and give the guidance and these prompts that I think people underestimate, but referencing, um, uh, like another job that people thought was going to meet its end years ago. And this was, you know, those of, you know, individuals who were ultimately working as, as tellers. And then came the ATM automated teller machine, where suddenly you found that people are like, Oh, see you later. You know, tell you're not going to need anybody doing that anymore. But actually what ended up happening is between 1980 and 2010, you actually saw an increase in, in tellers being hired because what had happened is these, you know, checkout clerks, whatever you want to call them, the tellers actually pivoted to become more like salespeople or building these relationships with customers and selling them on additional services, you know, credit cards, loans, so on and so forth. And banks, you know, continued uh, to sort of expand. So I think in the future here, what um, Microsoft's looking at with GitHub is that there's, it actually might open the door up for less experienced engineers you know, so some people might be like, do I bother learning this? You know, if uh, the tools are going to do it, but actually less experienced engineers benefited more from using AI because the new technology essentially leveled the playing field between the newbies and the veterans. Um, and, and, you know, in, in a world ultimately where, you know, experience matters less than senior engineers may be the ones who actually lose out because they won't be able to justify their high salaries when somebody else can come in newer to the role and do this. But this is going to open up a whole big question because now you're going to have people who are leveraging AI, they have higher productivity, but you're going to have to change the bar because like in the space I help people in around getting their, um, uh, you know, promotions and raises and you as well. It's like you, that means that before where somebody's like, well, I'm bringing a million dollars in savings. You're like, great. A million dollars is almost like inflation is now like saving a hundred thousand in the future. You may have to save 10 million to equate to that because some of these tools are going to allow you to accelerate that even quicker. There's that potential, or there is the potential that those who embrace it, if the company's not are going to see really big fat raises and promotions because they're going to leverage these tools that a lot of others um, are not. Yeah. Last, uh, uh, last thing I wanted to add before we uh, end this episode, the, Example of tellers. So over the last 10 years or so, another example has been cashiers. And yep. what I found very interesting in that movement is you go to you know, supermarket chain and they'll have the automated checkouts or, you know, just per, you know, self checkout areas. Maybe there's like six lanes for that. But then you have three employees standing in the middle monitoring it. So it's like, wait a minute. I thought if you got, you know, self checkout, you're not going to need employees. But it turns out you now need a more customer service centric minded employees to actually help people do the self checkout. Because yeah. the one thing that everybody forgets to think about is sure, we might be somewhat educated on tech, but majority population actually is not. So to assume that anybody can walk in and without any training, all of a sudden know how to operate a cash register is foolish. So I, I think a similar thing is going to happen where a lot of people are not just, are, are just not tech savvy to use these AI tools. So they're going to need humans to help them out. And yeah. that's, I think, where a lot of entrepreneurs and, and, you know, you know, turning a side hustle into an actual thing is going to evolve because you're going to need people to help other people use the tool and um, uh, not get, you can't assume that your 80 year old grandma is going to learn chat GPT. <laughs> so if, if she needs help with uh, writing something, then yeah, somebody has to help her. And, and I, I think that's where 
the, the human element yeah. is what slows down the, the takeover of AI because that human element is so necessary, which is why lawyers are not going away. Doctors are not going away. Uh, you know, executives uh, that lead are, need to build and run companies are not going away. Like it's, yeah. those, that, that human element is so important. You, you know, I think what potentially happens here um, is that in those scenarios you have, uh, we'll just take lawyers or doctors. I, I do think that actually the tools out there and the ability to get legal advice will improve from these type of tools and people may be able to get some of the basics and even help filling these things out. But I think the reality of it is, is that you'll still want somebody validating it. So I think it, it lets a lawyer, um, you know, grow their practice and actually create almost more of a funnel in of these ways to be able to help people and then get them to that finish line. But it's that finish line. You know, it reminds me of an old thing. I think it was FedEx or whatever, uh, that during Christmas holiday season, they had, you know, all their lines got backed up on the, the, you know, supply chain, the, what do you call it? Conveyor belts and stuff they were using. And, um, Ultimately, they had to call somebody in. A person who came in asked a few questions, went right over, knew exactly which button button to push. They pushed it, and everything went going. You know, started moving again. And and I think if I'm not mixing my stories up, the CEO at the time was like, "Oh my gosh, that's incredible! What do I owe you?" And at that time, I think it was something like fifteen thousand dollars. Like fifteen thousand dollars, you know, you just pushed a button, and the guy's like, "But I knew exactly what button to push." And I think that becomes the key here is because you're going to need those experts who are going to know what to do in the time where the AI doesn't work. And I think reinforcing what you were saying, these real, like what becomes extremely important is um, you still need people who are knowledgeable of these spaces, but those individuals, the executives that you said, the creatives still, who are ultimately going to be able to um, have a greater, you know, uh, eye or train the AI to think differently because, you know, we'll see, maybe AI eventually does think differently on its own, but right now it's just duplicating a lot of the stuff that's out there. So it doesn't know what the next great artist is yet, but fostering culture, leadership, emotional intelligence, like those are really important for people to continue to uh, lean in on because that's going to be what lets them stand out when we all have these assistant AIs and especially plug in uh, the other thing that Elon's working on. What was the, uh, his company he's got for computer chips in your neural brain? Neural Neuralink. Uh, Neuralink, yeah. So yeah. plug AI into Neuralink. And in the future, it will be kind of like the matrix where we're like, you know, I need to learn how to uh, fly a helicopter, you know, <laughs> fast or whatever it is. And suddenly it's like, <laughs> you're, you're able to do so through those things. Um, but what happens is if something unique goes wrong in the helicopter and nobody else knows, uh, like the AI doesn't quite know how to handle it. Well, you're going to hope that you could find the experts that you really need, you know, to, to, to land that helicopter. Yeah. You know, um, during the pandemic, when everything was locked down, there was so much virtual experimentation that happened, especially yeah. around concerts. So uh, I saw so many virtual concerts and it really showed me that there are some things that are not replaceable uh, without that human touch. Uh, because being in, in a audience and that energy that 10,000, 100,000 people create as you yeah. hear music that touches here is not replaceable by AI. And to me, that that is what humans were still are so good at, are going to continue excelling. Uh, and, uh, and if you're not good at touching people's hearts, then uh, you can use AI to help them touch people's heart. And I think that's where uh, it's going to be. Uh, no, that's great. So I, I think, you know, um, we want to continue this conversation. Um, next episode, we want to touch on more around the entrepreneurship side of things and uh, side hustles and how might AI impact that area. Uh, but for now, if you like what you're hearing, subscribe, follow, you know, whatever platform you're on. And don't forget to uh, send us comments on if there's other topics that, that you think will be interesting for us to talk about. And, and then our, our, just wrap it up real quick with some specific actions here for, for any of our, you know, uh, listeners or viewers. So if it's not clear, if you don't embrace AI, <laughs> you're going to fall behind. Uh, so if you're not already using it, you're behind the curve. Uh, it's time to get ahead. You know, same for you know companies that are wary. They're going to have to figure this out. And again, don't let your company not using it stop you from learning about it. You know, maybe you can't implement it directly in there. I'm not saying you go against the specific rules there, 
but you should be learning this because the education for yourself should be continuing despite what, you know, the employer is, is looking at. And you want to make sure you're learning these skills that are going to position you in the future, either when your company makes the turn or if you decide to go uh, anywhere else. And, you know, right now learning about prompt generate, you know, prompt engineering is a really good way to go. And, you know, if you search online, look, there's a couple of great newsletters out there. We could probably link a few below this uh, when we uh, post this, but like start there and start introducing yourself more if you're not already in it. And for those of you who are immersed, you know, hey, looking forward to seeing what you do with it. And, and maybe you could share also in the comments uh, ways that you've leveraged. Yeah, give us advice if so. you're immersed into this. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But to end this, this is the way. This is the way.